okay we can start the second part of this uh, lecture about uh, classes and modules uh, up to now we just uh, studied the basic me uh, prototype mechanism and now we can start uh, the easy part uh, where we uh, study classes and modules which are applications of the prototype mechanism uh, classes uh, are um, basically uh, an easier way of uh, creating objects uh, and uh, inheriting uh, between objects uh, that we already know uh, through construction functions. Mm -hmm. uh, before ES6, uh, we only had uh, the functions uh, and the new function syntax uh, to create new objects. Uh, and so every programmer had to know and work uh, explicitly through prototypes. Starting from uh, ES6, uh, we are lucky because we uh, have a new syntax in the language called class, uh, which actually does the same thing. Mm. Maybe it, does, uh, it checks more details, it takes into account of more uh, sp specific behaviors uh, uh, that we didn't uh, see in the, or didn't study directly in the prototype, so all the, all the edge cases are dealt correctly. But basically it implements the same mechanism of prototype linking that we saw before. Mm. Uh, and actually we are still reusing the same new keyword for creating new objects uh, uh, from from classes uh, instead of functions so new is still uh, uh, the, the way to go uh, like with functions we can declare a, um, a class in two ways uh, with a class declaration so the syntax is, is class name of the class and then the body of the class itself uh, we like we you know when you define a, a, a standalone function you use the same you use function and name of the function in the global scope or somewhere else uh, and so it's just a statement uh, for declaring a class okay uh, it creates a new name a rectangle which is the name of the class uh, and then the body we'll see the body the content of the body later uh, in, in a second the other option is you to use a class expression hmm? so like uh, use the class keyword inside an expression so let rectangle or equal to class uh, uh, like we are like we are used to work with the function expression so it's the same idea mm. uh, we can have a class a named class uh, used an expression or we can use uh, an unnamed class uh, to be used an expression and in both cases the important thing is that we assign to some identifier uh, the name of the class like we do with constructor functions uh, also the name of classes are usually uh, capital now we have the capital letter uh, to distinguish a, a class name from a normal function name like we do with constructor functions no, it's just a, um, a, a convenience method it's just a, uh, it's not a, a rule in the language it's just a convention that uh, capital letters are for creating stuff so are for classes and constructor functions um, and the difference between classes and functions is that for the classes, both expressions and, uh, and um, declarations, uh, they are not hoisted. So instead of functions that are hoisted, uh, whose definition is hoisted at the, at the top of the file, that means you can, you can call a function before defining it. Uh, the class ex explorations and class decla uh, declarations are not hoisted. So you can use a class uh, only after you define that in the code okay uh, the body of the class uh, contains all the uh, properties and methods of the class itself and uh, uh, in particular uh, there's a method uh, which is called constructor hmm? it's you see that the syntax is simplified it's just the name of the function and braces okay you don't have to assign to let constructor equal function no just the name of the function uh, parameters uh, every class should have, may have, or should have uh, one constructor method, only one, and uh, uh, if, if needed, the constructor may uh, contain a call to a supper keyword we will call the constructor of the upper class. We'll see that when we see the inheritance uh, syntax. Uh, and this constructor is uh, uh, the one that defines the properties of the object that are just creating, the, this object. So actually, right now, we have just replicated the behavior of constructor functions. Uh, if we call the function rectangle uh, with this code, with this body, it will be exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But uh, inside the class, we may have other methods, prototype methods or static methods. 
they are called prototype methods because they will be stored in the prototype of the class well the class is just a function okay we are just hiding uh behind a very nice syntax uh, the reality where rectangle is a function mm -hmm. and so it has a prototype property and we can add methods to the property to the prototype uh, and prototype methods are normal methods you see the syntax is very easy name of the method uh, body of the method mm -hmm. method name method body uh, without any function uh, or, or other, other syntax around so we can define the main one or many uh, methods inside the class scope and they will be stored into the rectangle.prototype properties uh, by the way we can also add new methods like this when you are creating objects and not just classes but that will be a, a niche uh, behavior we don't uh, really uh, it's not really used very much or unless you are trying to mangle objects uh, once you are created but uh, basically we use that uh, this syntax uh, just inside the class declaration for declaring a method which is we automatically link to the prototype uh, there are two special methods that you can define on the um, on the pro at the prototype level which are getters and setters getters and setters are for creating uh, uh, virtual properties pseudo properties uh, it, it, it's not java here okay uh, you don't need to define a getter and a sector for every local pro property because the properties are private that's java okay we don't want to do that here here if we define the height and white properties they are already immediately accessible to uh, uh, the instance of the object so we can r dot height uh, r dot white is perfectly legal okay you don't need to uh, define uh, a getter a sector for a property that is defined at the object level right so get and set are for creating uh, virtual properties they're called pseudo properties in the standard so properties that don't exist as real properties in the in the object so they're sorry i saw i lost the slide here they are not defined in the object but they're just function that pretend to be properties so for example uh, if uh, we can define a perimeter uh, property that uh, will return uh, the the um, this uh, computation of the perimeter of a rectangle and it's just a function so uh, we could use uh, the square dot calculate perimeter method nothing wrong with that but for a simpler syntax we could write uh, uh, square dot perimeter like perimeter was just a function just a, sorry just a property uh, we are setting the property and uh, um, we are perimeter looks like a property but actually when you are trying to access this property we are calling the getter because the property is not existing really so we are calling a function that returns a value that looks like the value of a property and strangely enough we can also set this kind of property that doesn't really exist and so a setter setting something a hundred to, to the perimeter will call a setter for the virtual property for a pseudo property and this uh, function of course will take care of inventing a rectangle a rectangle sorry with the right perimeter hmm? but just a, a very simple example so we are creating something that looks like a property so we can read it usually normally and you can set it normally uh but in reality we are calling this method so it's a simplified syntax for calling some methods that look like looks like a property but it really is a method call so if we want to use this mechanism uh, we can use that this is the you remember the asterisk when talking about the rules for uh, for navigating prototypes uh, this is the only uh, this is the main exception when we have a setter function defined then if we are trying to uh, use the property on uh, objects that are linked to this prototype then the setter is called uh, instead of creating the local property this is the exception if we have a setter up on the chain of, uh, of prototypes uh, the setter will be used instead of creating a local property when we are trying to set a property mm -hmm. only in the case of pseudo properties and of course they will create uh, specific properties in the object itself mm, because we are uh, modifying this and this is the local object it's not the upper object 
it's a, it's a very special case okay uh, again we may have static methods these methods are called without a, um, an object uh, uh, related to that they are just functions hmm, that are defined into the scope of the rectangle but cannot refer to the specific objects so they are just used for utility methods right? because basically they cannot use this the, this keyword and so uh, they don't know the object on which they operate they don't know the height and height of the rectangle because uh, and um, they, they are static functions so they are not they cannot uh, they are not accessing a specific object they are just um, executed in the context of the class so it's a way of defining a function of a general purpose function but uh, for clarity reasons you, we put that inside the scope uh, of, of the class and so also the, the syntax uh, we remember that this function is inside the scope of the class not of the object not of s, s or r but of rectangle hmm? it's a way of defining this uh, kind of function that are scoped inside the class so that we we don't have name clashes with other functions but there is nothing more than a, than a single function okay these are the, the basic mechanisms for creating classes and what uh, happens if we want to create subclass or superclasses uh, we know what really happens we know to create uh, the constructor function we know uh, that we need to uh, link the prototypes and so on and all of this is taken care of automatically by the class syntax using the extends keyword so when we say class student extends person what we are really doing is creating a new constructor for students that automatically uh, creates the right prototypes, uh, the right constructor property, uh, like we saw in the example before. Mm. So uh, everything we learned before is still valid. Right now, it's just easier to write, basically. And so also calling the constructor function to the to, um, to the next level of prototypes uh, is also made easier by the call of super, that automatically uh, emulates the call to the function by passing the new objects uh, of this. Mm. So uh, what we saw and at the end of the first part of this class uh, with the, the code where we were very carefully defining the prototypes of the function and all the objects, uh, all of this is being automated by the class syntax. So it's the same behavior, but easier to write. Mm -hmm. We are using constructor. We are using, a, a, we are setting properties here and they are automatically set to the prototype and not to the object. Uh, and we can use extend to do the, all the prototype, the correct prototype chaining uh, of uh, um, objects defined, uh, created by the new student uh, with the objects created by new person. Hmm. Uh, so that's basically uh, an easier way of writing that. Another topic, uh, again, it's an easy topic once we understood uh, everything that comes before, are modules. Mm -hmm. modules is another way of organizing information and organizing your code when uh, uh, in, if classes are used to group uh, functionality according to the similarity of objects uh, modules are used to group uh, uh, all the code uh, in different files so you can reuse some function definition some class definition that you wrote in a file you can reuse it in a second file uh, modules is, are not really new there are mechanisms for allowing you to have uh, um, separate files that can be imported but especially why do we want to have separate files because you want to have a mechanism for hiding some information so inside the file you can have some declarations that are to be exported that should be public and some that should be hidden so it should be private hmm? because otherwise if you're putting together code written in 10 different files uh, the probability of clashing some name of variable will be very high so if we want to make big programs and we you we need to make a mechanism for hiding some declarations and making other declarations accessible to the rest of the program again this is something we already know how to do with uh, um, immediately invoked functional expression we see an example in a moment so it's nothing new uh, we just, uh, uh, from the language point of view, we already know all the mechanisms of the language that use the, uh, uses immediate invoke function expression and closures uh, and normal objects uh, uh, to achieve this result. 
but again we have easier syntaxes for achieving the same and actually we are uh, we have at least two different syntaxes uh, one is called uh, es6 modules and the other is called uh, common js uh, common js is an older mechanism it was uh, introduced and popularized by node.js so it's a native mechanism that node uses uh, and it uses a required strength statement so if you write require on a file uh, that is using the module mechanism uh, offered by node.js it's called uh, common js it's never been standardized it's not a standard but it's a standard inside node hmm? um and uh, while the es6 modules which are the should be the oh by the way this is just a, a very simple layer on top of doing it yourself okay we'll see that in a moment or we can use the standard way so the standard ICMA standard for modules it's using two different keywords uh, added to the language export and import and it's supported by all the recent browsers which normally don't support common js and in the recent version of node is also supported so this is probably the way to go the future will use uh, these uh, import and export uh, syntaxes we will study them first uh, but we know that for the moment uh, a lot of node code node.js code is still using the older uh, syntax uh, using require um, for uh, for uh, for importing a module for another one uh, in version 2 which is the lts version we suggested uh, E ES6 modules are supported, but you need to run Node with this flag in order to enable them. Uh, from version 13 on, they are supported and activated um, immediately. So, so let's try to see all the three. First one, one slide. We already know it. Uh, creating. We want to to expose some variables to uh, some other part of our, of our program, but we want to hide some other ones. So we just define a function that we use as for creating a scope. So inside this function, we can define some variables and this variable will not be accessible from outside the function. But then we create an object that contains the properties. In this case, there are two methods, two functions, but we want to make them accessible. And these functions, of course, may access the internal variable, the private variables through the closure mechanism so uh, we define this function this function creates local variable private variables defines uh, externally accessible values packed into an object so this uh, we are returning an object that contains all the important all the externally visible properties and uh, we use the immediately invoked function expression so the function is defined here and is immediately invoked immediately called so the result so we are executing this code we return these two properties that are stored in these uh, uh, objects here hmm. so at that point we can write uh, batman dot fight crime we can use batman dot go civilian uh, but we cannot use batman dot identity because batman is not the body of the function but it's just this object okay the identity is only used as a closure by the go civilian function we already did that we already uh, appreciated when we discussed the function uh, why uh, immediately invoke function expression could be a way of uh, uh, creating a publicly a public interface for an object that also has some internal value uh, this is the basic mechanism we already know that it relies on objects and uh, enclosures hmm? nothing more modules are just a, a better syntax for achieving the same result for example um, in, uh, in the ES6 module uh, syntax, uh, uh, a module is just a JavaScript file uh, that uses the export keyword to export one or more values that may be functions, maybe variables, and so on. And uh, other JavaScript modules can just import the functionality using the import keyword. Okay, so we are adding to the JavaScript two, two new keywords, import and export. With import, a module can declare which other modules are needed and so it can execute the code of the other module and get the reference to some externally visible variable and which are the externally visible variables is defined by the export statement in the other module hmm? 
uh, we cannot uh, have uh, something uh, inside in the nesting function you cannot nest modules inside modules everything must be at the top level so there's only one level of, of hierarchy in the imports uh, but it's not a limitation usually and we have two main kinds uh, of exports so when we creating a module we can define a default value exported by the module or we, if we only have one value or if we have one, more than one of course you must name them you must uh, uh, specify identifiers for these exports so the default export uh, is used by is defined by the export default uh, keywords export default str means that when whenever we import this module we will get a reference to this function in this case it's an arrow function it could be an object it could be a string uh, we are exporting a value you see uh, not a, a name okay uh, we we don't need to give a name we, we cannot even give a name because we only we are only exporting one object so we don't need uh, to to name it so we are exporting a, a value and this value may be a function may be an object may be a constant uh, uh, or and then in this other case it's, it's again a function but we are not exporting it uh, with a name uh, with a grace name well just a reference to this function uh, the more flexible mechanism is uh, using named exports where we are using the export keyword without the default many many times uh, more than once uh, possibly and every time we can export this variable with the current value we can export this other variable we can export uh, this other one and so on we, we can have one export statement by listing more than one variable with the uh, with the syntax or we can also rename uh, with the as operator so maybe internally this variable is called another name but externally we want to to expose it as teacher so we are just declaring on a module what we want uh, to be seen to be visible from the outside everything else will be hidden hmm? on the other hand on the importing module we just uh, uh, say import uh, and an, a local name from the file name that contains the module uh, usually uh, the the import uh, is a uh, read-only so we cannot modify the the, the name so we cannot modify what we are importing we can only use it uh, usually and uh, um, and we give it a local name mm. uh, so for example if i have a module that exports a default value okay this is this arrow function which is being exported by module one we can import from a module with a, a, and give a name so we decide, decide the name to uppercase and this will be the name inside this module for this arrow function we usually use a, um, a local path syntax by saying that this other module is stored uh, in the same directory these are just files you know so we are importing a, reading a file executing a file from the same directory or from an absolute path which is very unlikely but uh, in 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 both cases uh, we can use the function in this case it was uppercase in the other case it was called to uppercase we choose the name when we import so the exporting module exports a value which in, the, in this case is a function value and we we read it and we give a name to that in the case of a default export in the case of named export which is a normal case we are exporting two variables to names uh, that refer to two objects in this case they are strings and uh, when we import from a module we can give the local names uh, sorry we can give the names of which properties we want to import because maybe the module may ex also export many other variables we can give the list of names uh, of which resources we want to import and in this case name here is the same identifier there so we must use the right names if we don't like the name that was given by the module designer we can rename it at the import time one when we are importing so name could be first and import first and internally it's called first but we need to specify the identifiers from the module um, that we want to import in our code there are also shortcuts 
maybe we want to import everything from a module uh, or only a subset of what the module is declaring or you can have a mixture of the default and uh, as one or more names uh, just notice that the default import doesn't have any braces around when where and when we are importing a name the export we are we must use the braces even if there is only one you must use the braces to specify that we are uh, looking for an export a statement and uh, if you just write import a without the braces you are trying to get a default export uh, so you are seeking from a variable that was uh, exported with export default with the export default syntax so this is quite simple basically we just need to uh, specify the module file name and uh, all or some or default uh, values that are being exported on the other side this is the uh, say language uh, specification how do this work uh, in the browser well uh, it's easy because you when you load a, a JavaScript file uh, you should or you just need to specify that the type of script is module this enables both the import and export statement so if you import a JavaScript file without specifying type in module then import and export does not work do not work they cannot work uh, so even the your code if you are using import to import something else it must be loaded as a module so when I, when you're just using imports to load some libraries for example your code becomes a module the module is both the code importing and the code exporting so everything should be loaded as a module in your HTML page you only load the main module and all the rest will be loaded by imports so you don't need to load here with the, the script tag um, the imported modules we load the main module your main program if your main program contains an import then the browser will load that file later another detail is that uh, that modules uh, are automatically loaded in different mode which is the preferred mode and in many cases uh, if you are trying to test modules locally by opening a file uh, from the browser on your file system in many cases it doesn't work because uh, of a restriction security restriction of the javascript sandbox uh, because uh, um, modules are loaded with the course standard we we'll, we'll study course in a in a, in a while but uh, if you if you see that modules don't work when you're trying them locally in the browser that's because of, uh, of security errors uh, and you will see them in the console in the developer console uh, we'll see we'll see how to uh, go get around this uh, restriction by when we uh, are able to to set up our own local web server um, another detail is that uh, the, the the name of the of a module can use a javascript extension js normally but it's highly suggested that you use the mjs uh, extension so that it's, it's more since uh, scripts and modules are not really interchangeable mm -hmm. because they work in different ways uh, and only inside modules you can use the import and export syntax so, so it's better to make them separate and call them in as module js uh, mjs instead of just js the only check you must do is that uh, the web server where these files are stored also recognizes the extensions and serve that uh, with the correct content type uh, otherwise your browser maybe you won't be able to recognize it hmm? uh, but it's just a detail all details uh, uh, are more let's say on the server side uh, that we need to configure rather than on the client side on the client side it's very easy we just have type module and we know that it automatically it will be it will activate a different mode for loading the script in Node.js, uh, as we said, the, the support of ES6 modules is more recent, so it's not so uh, so well automated right now. Um, uh, you are forced to use the MJS uh, extension. Mm -hmm. uh, the documentation is very clear about that. Uh, don't if you try to load a JS file as a module, you must specify tie.module in the packet.json, but it's not very recommended. Uh, the the normal way is to use uh, this extension and this extension uh, will enable the file only to be loaded in, in module mode uh, if you are using the version 12 in order to 
be able to recognize these modules, you must use the experimental modules flag when you launch Node.js, otherwise they will be not recognized. From version 3, 13, then this uh, uh, flag is no longer needed, and we just uh, remember to, uh, to save the file with the MJS extension. So this is just the, the, the easy way. Uh, again, there's nothing more than uh, what we can achieve with an immediately invoked function expression, but the, at least there's a mechanism which is much easier to define which variables are exported and which variables are imported. Uh, briefly, we may have also a look uh, at the other, uh, one of the others, but the main other uh, standard for defining modules, which are the so-called common JS modules, which was defined by the developer of Node.js. Um, it was defined, de de developed much earlier than the ES6 uh, um, standard. It can use a JS or CJS, common JS extension. To, to make the difference between a normal script. And usually the browser don't support this syntax, so you don't, you will, you don't see it in, uh, in, uh, in client-side code, you see it more on server-side code. Unless, of course, uh, there's a library for everything. <laughs> there are also libraries for uh, implementing the, re the required statement uh, in, uh, in, um, in the, uh, the client-side. Hmm? Uh, the documentation of Node.js is telling that basically what the required instruction does, what the CJS modules do, is to wrap your module code inside a function call. And this function, so all of your code is wrapped inside a function. So everything you write is uh, by default private because it's inside the function scope. It cannot be seen from outside the function. But when, uh, they give you some properties, some variable that you can, where you can set property, you can modify them, and uh, um, and so you can uh, make something visible to the outside of the function itself. Mm -hmm. So this wrapper, this function wrapper, actually hides the top-level variables uh, of your code. So you're you're writing let a equal to zero somewhere, but actually this let statement will go inside the function. So this variable a is not in the global scope, but is in the module scope or this function scope. And, uh, and if we want to make something visible, we can use the module variable and especially the export par uh, par property, which is a sub property of module. So writing export or writing module dot export is the same, um, where we can copy a reference to the variables that we want to export. Um, so, from the importing side, we are using uh, this syntax. So, instead of our code, we call the require function with the name of the file. Uh, this module name can, may also be uh, in Node.js uh, loaded from a, a, the Node modules folder, which is a module that has been created by npm inside of your project. So, you can give the the local path of the module explicitly, or you uh, implicitly will search for the node modules directories. And then it will return you an object that refers to all the exported variables uh, by the module. So we'll load the file, execute this function with your code inside, and it will return basically exports, whatever has been exported. And you can store these exports inside uh, an identifier that you choose. And from the export point of view, it's easy because you just have to set some properties that you want to export on the exports object. Exports, you remember, is the is a parameter that you get in this uh, wrapping function. Uh, or more explicitly, it can be called module.exports. Hmm? It's the same. You can have uh, use module.exports uh, or uh, export.property and uh, you are setting uh, whatever you want. Now, in this case, it's only exporting one class. Uh, in the other case, uh, it's exporting two functions. Uh, but if you set more than one property, you can export all of them. In this case, we, are, we have a sort of default export because there's only one object being exported. We are redefining exports altogether. In the other case, we are not redefining exports. We are just adding properties to that, which is the better way. Okay, that's uh, uh, 
the, the, the syntax is very, very simple, okay, on, uh, on, on the exporting module, you just add property to this predefined object, export. On the importing side, you just use require and have access to the object, uh, to the export objects uh, of the other module. Hmm? So it's a very sim simple syntax, it's just a, uh, a normal way of doing that without creating your own uh, immediate invoked functional expression. Uh, if possible, I would suggest, uh, let's go back to the general uh, here, uh, I would suggest, uh, uh, if possible, to using the new syntax, export and import, because it's it also being slowly integrated into a node. Uh, just remember, if you're using 12, uh, to use this flag. Um, but uh, we must also be able to recognize that 99% of the node packages today are still using the common JS syntax, so we must be able to recognize it uh, when we see it. Unfortunately, they, are, they cannot be mixed. The two ways cannot be mixed because you either create an MJS module that can import other MJS modules, or a, a CJS module that can import or require uh, other CJS modules. But these are just, uh, say, practical, uh, practical details. Uh, usually, if you are on the client side, uh, there's no discussion. You use export and import because the browser does everything by itself. If you are on the server side, you have the choice, um, but probably today is still wise to use require because 99% of the libraries in Node.js are using require and not are using export or import. But when you are maybe trying to debug some client-side code on Node, then you can use export and import because they are now, now they are supported too. So again, also modules like classes uh, are just a, a very sim simple to use syntax for something that we already knew. So wrapping and immediately invoked the functional expression uh, and using closures to hide uh, uh, variables and to make other variables visible to the outside. Mm -hmm. So they are easy to understand. We, since we already understood the, the, uh, the mechanism of closures, uh, modules are just a way of uh, organizing them, of engineering them with a simple syntax. Mm -hmm. So these are the uh, organization, uh, let's say, uh, statements, uh, classes and modules that allow us to go beyond a simple script uh, and make something bigger uh, by using the basic mechanism of the language, but, but with a simple syntax so that we can grow uh, more easily our program, separate them in different files and know how to import from each other. And so this concludes this part uh, from prototype classes and modules lectures to, for today.